Welcome back to another exciting video lessons. In this video, we are going to learn about SI unit. Now, before we look at SI unit, we need to look at the term physical quantity. It is a physical property of matter that can be measured and quantified. Basically, we can look at this particular properties of matter and we use an instrument to collect quantitative data about it. Now, what is an SI unit? Well, I is for international, S is for system. This is a system of units that are used internationally. That is, all the country around the world use this system of unit. It is based on the metric system and it is based on the SI's base unit. The word base basically fundamental unit that we use to make other unit. Of course, one of the most beautiful thing about SI unit, it is based on prefixes. But what's so special about the prefixes? Representing the power of 10. Now, why is it so important that we have power of 10? Because we learned that when we multiply by 10, we just move the decimal. Or when we divide by 10, we just move the decimal the other way around. So this is for division, this is for multiplication by the power of 10. Of course, we have some of the common prefixes right here, and we are going to learn all about it later. But just for now, we have to realize that the powerful aspect of SI unit is that we are able to use with different prefixes, and that different prefixes represent different values to the power of 10. For example, we have heard of kilo before, that's 10 to the power of 3, where milli is 10 to the power of negative 3. But let's get back to talk about the SI's base unit. There are seven SI's base unit. They are the seven internationally standardized unit that are used to measure seven fundamental, think of the term fundamental and base, okay? Properties of matters and look at some of the properties of matter that we can measure. Here are the seven fundamental properties of matter. Here we have distance. If we look at this ice cube right here, of course we can look at the distance. We can measure the length and the width of the ice cube. We can measure the mass, okay? We can measure the amount of matter in terms of mole. We can look at the time, well in most cases, how fast this ice cube can be melted, we look at the time. We can look at the temperature of the ice cube. We can look at the charges. We can look at the luminous intensity. These are the seven properties, fundamental properties of matter that we can measure for most of the matter in this world. Now, notice how I add volume in there. Volume liter used to be considered as one of the base unit, but volume is actually directly related to meter cube. So one liter is actually equal to meter cube. Now, because volume in liter is so commonly used, we put it here because we want to realize that in chemistry or in science, liter is more commonly used than meter cube, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, to understand the power of the base unit, we have to memorize the basic information about it. First, we have to realize that these Unit are used in equation and we have to use the equation to solve for specific properties of matter and you need to memorize them okay that's why we have this table for you for distance is represented by the letter D mass is represented by the letter M lowercase volume capitalized V okay and here we have mole represented by the letter N T we know is time and then for temperature is capitalized T Okay, and for the charges is capitalized Q, and for luminous intensity is capitalized I. So, of course, you have to recognize what each symbol represents in terms of the physical quantity that we measure. And then we have the base unit again. The word base is another word for standardized unit that we use to measure different properties of matter. For Distance, we have meter, and of course here we have the abbreviation of the unit. For mass, we have kilograms. And of course, for volume, we have liter. Again, this is an exception. It is based 
It used to be an SI space unit, but it's commonly used, that's why we put it here. And then for amount of matter or substance, we have mole, time, we have second. Again, temperature is Kelvin, and then charges is Coulomb, and then luminous intensity is Candela. And here we have the abbreviation for all those units that we have here. And of course, because it is a SI base unit, you know right away the abbreviation is equivalent or the same as the dimension. Except again for a liter. One liter is equal to meter cubed. So that's why volume used to be an SI base unit. And again, SI and base unit are fundamental unit that standardize and agree by all the country in this world. What's so special about the fundamental unit is that we can combine two or more of the same or different SI base unit by multiply or divide each other to create another SI unit that are derived from those SI base unit. Let's look at some example. One of the common one you probably see already is volume. Volume is basically what meter time meter time meter. That's why we have meter cube. Okay. And another one is you already see already part of the area. Area right here, look at this. Meter time meter equal to meter square. Now let's look at another one. Density is kilogram over liter or we can have grams over milliliter. We will talk more about the prefixes later. But look at joule. Joule is a unit for energy. Look at this. Look at all the SI base units that involve in joules. Now let's look at another one. Look at the current of electricity. Look at this. We have Coulomb over second. So now you know that SI's base unit of an SI system work together to create other unit that we measure different properties of matter in our daily life. So don't just assume that SI unit is all about the SI base unit, but how we use them together with prefixes and how we multiply them or divide each other using the common seven SI base unit to measure other properties of matter that is new to us, like energy, okay? So that's the power of the SI system and how scientists use to measure properties using the SI unit. Now let's go to Streamline Ed and try some of the problems. So let's look at this one here, drag and drop to best match the unit with physical quantity that is measured by that particular unit. In this case, the amount of matter. Well, that is gonna be mole, okay? So we just look at our notes. The mass of a sample, so that has to do with kilograms, okay? So we're not just talking about the SI base unit, but just the unit that we use to measure the sample. And how about distance? Distance is about meter, okay? Temperature we know is going to be in Celsius, and based on our table, we look at temperature is in Kelvin. That's the unit that we use, but in U.S. we measure in Celsius. So that's something we do to trick you. The volume, we have liter, or we could have meter cubes, okay? And then how much energy? It is joule. Now let's check our answer. Now let's try another problem. Here we change the problem a little bit by adding prefixes into it, right? The amount of matter, we know something how you do with mole. Here you go. So we have, in this case, millimole. The key part is the mole part, okay? The mass of a sample. Mass, we know something how you do with grams or kilograms. So here we have grams, okay? Distant travel, that would have to do something with meter. Here we have M, okay? And then the temperature, we know it had to do something with Kelvin. But in U.S., we have Fahrenheit. This is a little thing that we add to twist the question to make it more difficult for you and increase your critical thinking. Volume of solution, we have to know that is due with liter or meter cubes, okay? And then how much energy? Here we have megajoules. So now you see how SI units are used with Prefixes. In this case, we have Fahrenheit. That's not an SI unit. That's American unit system. But we just put that to trick you to make sure that you understand that units are used to measure properties of matter, and we have different units to measure properties of matter. In this case, of the same properties of matter.